What's going on everybody? It's Chris from Pro Photo USA and today we are outside in uh, what you're, I'm sure gonna hear is this bird war that's been uh, happening over the top of my head here recently. But what we're talking about today is blending your flash with the natural light. It's a pretty easy thing to do, but I think one of the problems that a lot of people wind up doing is they'll, they generally tend to wind up cross lighting their subject. And the technique, you don't necessarily wanna cross light because once you start cross lighting your subject, it's gonna start looking like two light sources. The point of trying to make your flash look like it's not even there anymore and to blend it away with your natural light is trying to, first and foremost, make sure that you're controlling your contrast. So you wanna make sure that you're kind of exposing for your ambient and bringing it up. And in some cases, like if you're in an area where maybe you can see more of the horizon line, we're in my backyard for obvious reasons. Everybody's still home for the most part. But if you're in somewhere where you can see a little more of the horizon, there's a good chance your sky's gonna be blown out and and that's okay because you're trying to make it look natural and granted there are going to be some ways that you can kind of walk it back a little bit and maybe bring the contrast up a little bit more where you bring the sky down but what i'm going to show you is how i normally do this and it should be fun stuff uh and then the other part of that is actually bringing the light from the same side as the sub uh, 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 as on the subject as the same side as the sun's coming from so right now the sun just happened to go behind a cloud but currently where i'm standing the sun is kind of like right above me and just a little bit to my left. And so where I'm gonna actually have Kate being photographed, which is right over here uh, with this, the umbrella, the sun's actually gonna be coming from, from right here. So for the most part, it's gonna, I have this big umbrella sit here with the B10 Plus, and it's just gonna look like a big, it's gonna look like the light's just wrapping around your subject, which is kind of cool. And then once again, you can decide, depending on how much you do or don't want a darker or lighter background, you can adjust all that stuff with your shutter speed. I'm gonna show you, I actually have a, a, another camera, camera link set up on my uh, camera, so you'll be able to see what I'm seeing through my eyepiece whenever I'm looking, and that way you can see what I'm talking about whenever I'm deciding what I want that background to look like. Uh, Modifier-wise, we're going pretty simple. We're going one light, because once again, all I'm trying to do is blend that flash with the ambient. I'm not trying to do too much crazy stuff, and I think uh, this is a really, really good setup. Uh, I, once again, whenever I'm on location, I'm a big umbrella guy. Uh, I love um, either, this is the umbrella white large, uh, so it's a white finish on the inside, and I have the diffusion panel on the outside just to kind of even out that light beam a little bit more, and so it's, it's nice and it's smooth as it, as it you know, hits Kate. And then we're just shooting with a B10 Plus. Uh, easily could have been done with a B10. I'm nowhere near full power on this thing, so, uh, if, if you wanted to go with something a little more compact, uh, like the B10, a little bit smaller, you'd be sitting pretty just here fine. I just had the B10 Plus, it's what I've, I had on a light stand in there, so I kind of just grabbed it. Uh, but B10 Plus, and I'm shooting to my camera, Fuji X-T3 with a TTLF remote on top of it. So before we actually get shooting and stuff like that, let me see if you guys have any questions for me. So what's going on? Chris Austria. Hey, dude, good to hear from you, man. Hope, every, hope, hope you're doing well. Greetings in San Francisco. What's happening, everybody? Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Cool, sweet. All right, let's do it, guys. So what I have set up here and what you're gonna see through my camera is actually as soon as it wakes up, you know what I should do? I didn't double check while I go when I had to, I had to restart my computer right before we went live because uh, it was just acting a little funky. So, what I didn't ensure is that we are connected and we're good. So we have all of our stuff set up as far as our camera goes. So camera settings wise, uh, we're gonna start with uh, f2.8 on my, uh, my f-stop and we're gonna go with an ISO of, um, I think we're at 160 on the ISO if I'm not mistaken, yes. And we are going to have the um, decision on the shutter speed uh, determined by the ambient. And so what you're going to notice too is it's kind of a partly cloudy day. So the sun's going in and out. So we're probably going to be playing with that just a little bit. And then we're going to take a shot in TTL. We'll, and if, uh, then we'll flip over to manual mode and we'll to lock that TTL into place. And we'll fine tune it from there if we need to. So pretty easy stuff. So let us rock and roll with this. So. Kate, you ready to go? So you want wide shot in camera? Sure. Is that good? Okay. So we have Kate getting up here. She's switching over so you guys can see what's going on. Um, I'm going to give you guys my display currently. If we're good there, F2.8. 
So there you guys can see the inside of my display, what it looks like. And so what we're gonna do, and you can kind of just see how we're gonna make this light determination, take a tiny step back, Kate. Tiny step back, there we go. So like I said, for the most part, the light's coming from this way on Kate right now. So it's, it, now that it's getting a little bit further in the afternoon, it's gonna start coming down a little more direct. I can actually take my light and position a little bit more and, and pivot, Caitlin, which is what I'm probably gonna do. Um, turn this way, I just wanna see. Actually, just go chin down a little bit. There we go. So all we wanna to try to make sure we're doing is getting the extra highlights off like the nose and stuff like that and the cheek. So you could do that just by simply having her chin down a little bit. And it's pretty much gone. So, and you could also, depending on Depending on what you want, you can actually take the light and kind of block a little bit more too if you wanted to. I have the light positioned uh, relatively high above Kate and then pointed down probably 45 degrees-ish. That's just to kind of give that feeling of it coming from above. So let's see, let's see, let's see. So when you're looking through the eyepiece, right now if you look at Caitlin, it's kind of exposed for a natural light shot. It's uh, actually pretty blown out. So let's bring the shutter speed up until it starts to look more like what I would take. Like if I, if, if, I was, if I was doing a natural light shot right there, I would probably expose the shot for something like that. This is really, really pretty, a little over, but you know, you drop, you jump up here to 500th of a second, it's probably a touch more underexposed than I want. Go chin down just a little bit, Caitlin. There we go. You get rid of that hot spot on the eye. So let's, so it's kind of just a, a, about walking in between where you want with your contrast. So like right there looks nice to me. So it's it's pretty subtle, a touch underexposed. So all I'm gonna do now is turn on my air remote. I'm in high speed sync right now. So I'm at 400th of a second on my shutter speed. Sorry about that. I bumped the camera. There we go. So I'm at 400th of a second. So we're gonna make sure that we are in high speed sync. We're gonna take a TTL shot. Here we go, three, two, uno. Cool, I heard the beep. Let me see what we got on oh am i blocking my eyepiece oh gotcha it's i can't i can't do that whenever my computer's tethered up so there we go chin down and touch caitlin three two one so i actually think i'm letting in a touch too much ambient now the sun's pop kind of popped back out from behind the clouds oh no yeah the sun's definitely popped up from behind the clouds so let's get that back up there in the 500 range chin down a little bit caitlin and we're in ttl mode three two one so just a little touch of light. I'm gonna actually take a shot without the flash on. Chin down a little bit. So it's still, it's probably still more, a little more natural light looking than I want. So we'll go to about a thousand of a second. That's more like what I'm looking for. A little more underexposed. So here we go. Chin down just a touch. There we go. Hold on. Sorry guys, I, I am not syncing up the way that I'd like to. Look right back here, Caitlin, chin down a little bit. There we go, the light's starting to come back in. So I'm gonna flip over to manual mode and just give myself a little bit of juice and then pop, just like that. So let's, oh, like I said, I keep bumping this little knob on my camera. Sorry guys, I'm gonna bump this thing down. Caitlin, thanks, I'm gonna come over here. Just having a little bit of a TTL issue, but you know, it happens, happens, happens. Cool, sorry guys, let's see, so I took a shot. If I can find, can't even. Back in there. Do what? It's computer back. Okay. Oh, did we lose the computer? Yeah. That must be why I lost the cursor. I, I hit the. I hit, I hit my little HDMI port. There we go. I lost my cursor for a second. Party people. Sorry about that. And uh, I've been having Mac issues all morning. So apparently, it's what I'm currently having. So. Let's see, can I see, can I see, can I move? We're gonna talk right now until my computer catches back up because apparently it's, it's a little upset. So, there we go. Is, it, can, is, it, is it showing? It came back and then it left. Yeah, it's fighting me a little bit. So, I don't know if it's overheated or something like that. Sorry guys, computer's running a touch slow. We'll let it catch back up. So like I said, the point of what we're trying to do though is you're just trying to take the light source and bring it from the same direction that you would be, um, that the sun would be coming from. So that way it's gonna come down really nicely. It's gonna wrap. It's gonna look really, really beautiful. So the thing that you wanna kinda pay attention to is you wanna make sure that you're using a big light source to give you the wrap 
because if you start using something like a harder light source, what's going to happen is you're going to start seeing some of those more defined shadows that you would get from like a magnum reflector or just using it bare head. You're going to actually start to see some of that stuff creep in, especially depending on your light position. So because the sun source is coming from you know high and above and, and behind, and right now honestly it's probably not the best time of the day to be doing this just because it's directly above and you fight with shadows. What I would normally do is just let the sun set back a little bit. And, and the beautiful thing about this technique is it's not one of those techniques you have to wait till golden hour for. So you could, you know, what are we, we're getting close to two o'clock. So you know, two, three-ish as the sun starts to rock back just a touch and keep the sun right behind the subject and then just bring the light to the same side that the subject's coming from. Because once again, you're gonna wanna use the soft light that would feel more like a wrap than you would another light coming directly at the subject because that's gonna start creating shadows on the subject. This, they're gonna look like there's a light there at that point because you already have other lines coming from where the sun's gonna be positioned from behind. So let's see, did my computer, oh, there we go. We're back in business on the computer department. So, so you can see the difference between the two. So the natural light shot, really, really natural looking, very, very pretty, but just a touch of light. And you don't have to bring in too terribly much. And, and, and I could do a couple more things with light positioning. Honestly, I would probably back Caitlin up just a little bit and bring the light around just a touch. So it's, it once again, kind of feels like it's wrapping. This is probably a little bit too feathered for my taste as far as this goes. It would also allow me to get the catch light back in the eye a little bit more. Right here, it's the catch light you're seeing is more of reflected from the concrete from below. But it's really, really simple. So this is with the flash off and this is with the flash on. So it's just, it just gives you just a little touch of light. It doesn't really look like uh, you're adding any type of light source into the situation. It just starts, you know, like I said, bringing the contrast down between the subject. So we can take another shot real fast just to, to you know, fiddle with it and see um, what things are looking like. Let me see if you guys have any questions. Let's see, oh, oh, gotcha. Chris, sorry about that, guys. My, uh, my, my computer started freezing up on me. I couldn't even see my chat. Let's see, uh, Chris Austria, what model's the umbrella? Yeah, we're using the deep white large umbrella. So it's, um, I think it's 50, 54 inch umbrella or something like 52, 54 inches, something somewhere in that range. I think it's 52 because the extra large is 65. So it's a pretty nice size umbrella. It, it'll give you a, nice, a lot of good coverage. Let's see. Um, <laughs> it gets too bright. Yeah, the, um, the sun's going in and out of clouds. Like we're trying to trying to mitigate it the best we can, but it just it's the sun's moving and the clouds are going in and out. We'll just have to run. Let's see. How long does stream go? It depends. Depends on if you guys have any questions. Um let's see. Cool. Let's do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring Caitlin back out here. And we're going to kind of just fiddle with it a little bit longer. I'm gonna bring the the light around to more of, of what it is that I'm looking for. So let's do that. Perfect. So come on, Caitlin, let's do this. So what we're going to do is just a second ago, we were feathering more of the light source. I'm actually going to bring it a little bit more forward and pivot it just so I can actually get a little more light across her face. But once again, like I said, the sun's coming from kind of like right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the light a little more forward. So I'm getting on more coverage on her face. And then there we go. Chin down a little bit. So I just want to see where the sun's going. There we go. Cool. So once again, what we're going to do, get my camera up and running. Here we go. Right on. There we go. So my shutter speed's kind of looking where I want you down a little bit, Caitlin. So maybe something kind of right there where it's just a little underexposed. And then I'm going to, once again, make sure I'm in TTL mode because I changed my settings up just a touch. Three, two, one. A little more of a zoom in on the crop. Let's see. There we go. Three, two, one. Gorgeous. I'm going to take one flash with it off. So there we go. And I'll turn the flash back on. Hold that right there, Caitlin. So perfect. So it's just subtle. It's nothing too crazy. Thank you, Caitlin. It's subtle. It's nothing too crazy. And you don't want it to be. So I've got. 
So just a, it's a little bit more pop. And then once again, you can go in there and you can start bringing that up a little bit more. I prom I, I, I honestly would probably go up about, sorry, got a little glare on the screen. I would probably go up about a half a stop on the, on the light source myself uh, for, for my taste in that. I, I can't, I'm so far away from my laptop that I can't preview and, and check that stuff out. So, but I would probably come up about a half a stop, but you know, here we go, no light and just a little light popped into the subject. So it's really, really subtle. Nothing, nothing too crazy. And then once again, you can play with those settings for kind of what it is that you like. Like I said, I'd come up about a half a stop more just to give it a little bit more of a pop. But it's gonna start to, it's gonna start to just kind of bring the subject up a little bit more without feeling like it's, um, like, like there's a flash there essentially is what we're trying to, trying to achieve. So once again, it's honestly not the most ideal time of day for it. As you can tell, as I keep getting going in and out of the sun and it keeps uh, blowing me up. So, but really easy stuff. So let's see if you guys have any questions before I sign out for the day. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Anything else? What's the flash set at power wise? 4.1. So we're down at like 1 64th of a second. So we're actually pretty low power. That's a B10 plus. So if you're using a B10, you'd be at 5.1. So you still have a lot of range to go up and up and down. So if you need, once again, if you need to get that, that light back a little bit, you can bump it up, no problem. If that little, if that, that subtlety is the, what it is that you're looking for, you're living at 4.1, you should have a ton of battery life for the day. So a lot of light. Let's see. Um, cool. So hopefully that was some cool information for you guys. Once again, just the things that we want to do whenever we're working on this is we want to make sure that we're, once again, keeping the light in the same direction that the, the sun is gonna be coming from, or at least on the same side of the subject that the sun's coming from. Because once you start to cross light, it's gonna to start to feel really unnatural uh, because you're gonna, at that point, you're gonna have two light sources. And it's one of the issues that you can run into with a reflector too. Like we had like one of a, a, a bounce reflector uh, like we make, if you reflect from the other side, once again, it's gonna start looking like two different light sources. So it's not gonna feel as natural. As long as you can keep the either the flash or the reflected light coming from the same direction that the majority of the light source is coming from, you're gonna be able to take that and blend that a lot more subtly. Once again, you're gonna to wanna to go with the softer light source, something bigger, that way you're getting more wrap. A harder light source is going to start showing more shadows on your subject. And what that's gonna do, once again, is that's gonna show there is a second light source in the shot, letting people know that this is not this is not a natural light shot. So if you're going for that natural, subtle look, once again, light on the same side of the, the main sun source is coming from and go with the big, big um, modifier. Octobox, uh, umbrella, like I said, I like to go with umbrellas outside just because they're easy to open and close. Uh, so a setup and breakdown is pretty quick. And then the other thing that I think messes with people a lot too is don't worry so much if your background starts to go. A lot of times when you're shooting natural light, your background is gonna kind of go. And a lot, a lot of times when people are shooting natural light, they're honestly, they're probably under tree cover and stuff like that, or they're letting kind of the sun go down a little bit more so it gets darker. But if you are shooting at this time of day uh, and you're trying to make it look natural, it's gonna be a bright sky. So the chances that you're gonna be able to maintain that are relatively slim and keep it relatively natural looking. Granted, there's a fine line that you can walk there and it's just a combination of playing with the two. And it may be even one of those things where you, it, it, you bring in two lights at some point and you really start to bring down the ambient light and then you have a man and a fill. So once again, you would still want to just keep that light, the, the, your main light source coming from the same side as your subject, but lots of things are doable. So let's see. Hey, what's up? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Netherlands, what's happening? Everybody in the house, I appreciate Oh, uh, what battery pack are you using? I am using, oh, um, would you prefer the white or silver umbrella and why? Um, I like the white umbrella myself just because I think the, it, it's just a smoother finish. I mean, I could, I could probably take the diffusion panel off of it and get a very, very similar look just because it's, it's really, really forgiving. The silver is nice, it can, it can give a good little punch, but I want a little more coverage on my subject. And what, you, what I find with a silver umbrella is uh, they can be a little pointed. It's still a big light source, it's still soft because of the size of it, but 
it can get a little more contrasty. So that's why I went with the white umbrella. You can put a diffusion panel over it and, and kind of even out some of that on the silver if you want to. But um, I just wanted to start with something pretty even and then hit it with a diffusion panel and make it even more even. So for me, it's just about having the light be pretty equal all the way around the light modifier and coming out and, and hitting the subject. So and battery, what, what light we're using, we're using a B10 plus. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just up inside that umbrella, B10 plus. Like I said, power level we were at was about 4.1. So we have another you know, six stops of juice to go up on the top side if we decided to do, to do more stuff with it. And that's through an umbrella, which is pretty nice. Let's see. Um, is there any difference between Okta versus a beauty dish? So we talked about this here recently. The, the Okta would probably give you a lot of what you want. The, the thing that you're trying to achieve is softness. So if you start going with too small of an Okta box, it, depending on how much coverage you're trying to get on your subject, you could easily, is it a little bright? Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, what can happen is, especially with a beauty dish, you're gonna start, if you try to back that up to kind of get more coverage on your subject, you're gonna start losing the things that make that beauty dish soft or a smaller Octobox soft. Now, if you're using like a bigger Octobox, I wouldn't see why that would be a problem. It's just, it's, it depends on how you like to set your stuff up. Like me personally, I just like the quick setup of an umbrella. So I usually go that route. <laughs> Sorry, Caitlin almost took her head off with a set of headphones. Um, so it, it depends on kind of what you want. I wouldn't necessarily do it with a beauty dish just because it's not gonna give you the size that you need to make the light look like it's just a natural light wrapping around your subject. Um, I mean, you could do some other creative stuff with a beauty dish and a beauty dish is really meant for more of a tighter, uh, a tighter shot. This is, <laughs> my daughter is, is calling for me. Hey hon, I'm working right now. We'll get back. I'll get back to you in a minute. Um, so beauty dish, like I said, you wanna try to keep that relatively tight. So I probably wouldn't do that with a beauty dish, especially if you're trying to get more three quarter length full body shots on somebody. Uh, so I would go with, a, uh, I would just go with something a whole lot larger. So let's see. Cool. Well, hopefully that was some cool information, everybody. Um, we, <laughs> hopefully that was, I literally have everything happening over her head right now. So there's been no airplanes in the skies for months and I get one right over top of the head right now. So. So hopefully that's some cool information. I really, really appreciate you guys coming and hanging out. Uh, thank you so much for just doing this live with me. Uh, if you guys have any questions about anything or you wanna see anything in particular, shoot me a message anytime, I'd love to cover it. In the meantime, I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. Happy Memorial Day if you're here in the US and we will see you next time. Peace out.